Throughout the Clone War, the Venator-class Star Destroyer was the Republic's most popular and effective capital ship. Having evolved out of the successes of the Acclimator-class assault ship, Venators were designed as a medium-sized, versatile, and multi-purpose warship that could carry out a number of vital roles against the Separatists. These roles included ship-to-ship -ship combat, warship escort, military transport, and importantly, as we'll come to see, a starfighter carrier. So given its ability to perform such a high number of key operations, and its success for the Republic in the Clone War, why did the Galactic Empire completely phase out the Venator-class Star Destroyer? In this video expose, I will explain why every Venator-class Star Destroyer was eliminated by the Empire. First, it's important to note that Venators were not phased out of the naval fleet of the Empire merely because they opted for other capital ships that were simply larger, such as the Imperial-class Star Destroyer. While it was important that the Imperial class was larger, with a length of 1600 meters, versus the Venator's 1137 meters, the Venator class wasn't replaced simply because it was smaller. There were many other larger and more powerful capital ships than the Imperial class within the Imperial fleet, and yet it was the Imperial class that would earn its position as the signature warship of the Empire and the backbone of its fleet. This demonstrates that Venators were not replaced because the Empire was on a never-ending hunt for capital ships that were larger and larger, otherwise the Imperial class would have eventually come to be replaced as well. Further, the Empire included a number of smaller Star Destroyers within the Imperial fleet that were smaller than the Venator class, such as the Victory One class Star Destroyer, which had a length of 900 meters, a full 26% smaller than the Venator. And it wasn't just larger, Venators possessed powerful weaponry that was equal to that of the Victory One. Further, the Venator class had already proven itself to be an effective capital ship in the Clone War, having successfully led independent missions against the Separatists. So then why did Venators come to be completely eliminated by the Empire? The reason why Venator class Star Destroyers were phased out by the Empire has very little to do with the fact that they simply wanted larger capital ships. More importantly, it was because of the Venator class's operational design as a starfighter carrier. Venators were designed to accommodate hundreds of starfighters in order to serve an important starfighter carrier role. To fulfill this role, Venators were designed with enormously large hangars that were much larger than those found in the Star Destroyer models within the Imperial fleet. To utilize this impressive number of starfighters, Venators were designed with large dorsal flight decks and launch bays, and even committed the entirety of one of its two bridges for use in Starfighter Command. A typical Venator-class Star Destroyer was able to carry a complement of 420 starfighters including 192 V-Wing or V-19 Torrent Starfighters, 192 Eta II Actis-class Interceptors, and at least 36 ARC-170 Starfighters. Needless to say, although primarily designed for ship-to-ship -ship combat, the design of the Venator was significantly influenced by its secondary role as a Starfighter carrier that could bring its contingent of Starfighters to bear against the enemy in battle. However, this secondary role of the Venator, and really the heavy reliance upon starfighters in general, came to be viewed unfavorably and unnecessary by the Imperial Navy following the Clone War. For the Empire, the greatest lesson of the war was that the future of space warfare was dependent upon capital ships, which could bring their power to bear on entire star systems. From this lesson, the Imperial Navy's doctrine emphasized the use of capital ships, and was unconvinced of the importance of achieving starfighter superiority. For this reason, the use and accommodation of starfighters in the Imperial fleet was greatly reduced, and relegated to a minor role within the Navy. Because the Venator-class Star Destroyer's design was so heavily dependent upon the use of starfighters, with their significantly large carrying capacity, the capital ship was viewed as obsolete, or at the very least, counter to the ultimate military doctrine that informed the actions of the Imperial Navy. For this reason, the Venator was done away with in favor of Star Destroyer designs that focused on smaller fighter complements and small hangars and launch bays, thereby making room for more powerful reactors 
heavier armor, and greater weapons. To demonstrate just how unnecessary the starfighter-based design of the Venator was in comparison to the needs of the Imperial Navy, even though the Imperial-class Star Destroyers were larger, they carried a complement of merely 72 starfighters versus the Venator's 420. Therefore, the primary reason why Venator-class Star Destroyers were entirely eliminated by the Empire was due to the fact that Imperial military doctrine did not require the starfighter carrier role that the Venator was designed to perform, nor its ability to carry a large starfighter complement. Rather, the Imperial fleet chose star destroyer designs that moved away from starfighter superiority and towards the projection of power through capital ships, as required by its dedication to the Tarkin Doctrine. So there we have it! why every Venator-class Star Destroyer was ultimately eliminated by the Empire. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions? Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. If not for me... For Secular-class Star Destroyers...